Welcome to Stand Up Tonight, the brand new stand up comedy show showcasing new and emerging Irish talent. I'm Alan Young, and we're coming to you from the National Film School in IAD D. Tunleary, along with the fabulous studio audience and our wonderful house band, the Fanny Bashers, ladies and gentlemen. We have we have a spectacular lineup of hilarious I Irish talent coming your way, all of which have a serious dose of them funny bones. Tonight, we bring the funny to you. Four stand ups will take to the stage, and rest assured, we'll have you in fits of laughter, let's hope. If we have time at the end, we'll chat to them and learn a little more about them as we watch helplessly, then plug their upcoming gigs, tour merchandise, and tell all autobiographies. Our first guest tonight is Tim Charles, a homegrown comedian from IADT. He's backstage gearing up for tonight's performance. This is it. This is it. Feel the point. Feel the point. I can do this. I can do this. I can. I can do this. Funny. Come on, Al. Louie, how could you do this? Bill. Surprise by you though. Don't you let me down, Jerry. Hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you, each and every one of you. How are we feeling? <laughs> oh, we can do better than that. How are we feeling? <laughs> Now, with St. Patrick's Day just gone, I would like to ask who here would say that they're proud to be Irish? <laughs> now, I'm not saying under any stretch of the imagination that we're the best. We have things like Saoirse Ronan, and we have things like voting over other people's bodies, even though we can't control our own bodies. But in comparison to other countries, shooting missiles across the world and a walking, talking hairpiece of a president we're not doing the worst. We're not doing the worst. Now, the reason I ask this is because recently, ladies and gentlemen, I discovered that there's one word that perfectly encompasses and describes what being Irish is truly all about. Now, that one word, ladies and gentlemen, is the fear. <laughs> Instantly, you can tell who here has had the fear. They're trying to grip any possible body part they can. It's a horrible, horrendous feeling, full of dread and anxiety and fear. For anyone who doesn't know what I'm talking about, the fear is when the night before you went out for all of the drinks, all of the drinks imaginable. <laughs> it's as if your bride-to-be, you were getting married, and your bride-to-be ran away with your father. That level of <laughs> fucked up. Now. You wake up the next day, and you can't remember any of it, none of it at all. And if you do, you can only remember little flashes, little glimpses. Did I talk to her? Did I steal his drink? Did I tell everyone about that sex dream I had about my mom? <laughs> that's, that's just me. That's fine, that's fine, we'll keep going, we'll keep going. But you really don't remember any of it. So you spend the entire day writhing in pain, trying to think back to, to, to what happened. And then you realize, it, it comes to you that you had a witness, you had a friend there. So then you think, I can ask my friend and they can help me piece back what happened. But see, the problem is, is this so-called witness or friend, this is your Irish friend. And under no circumstances whatsoever can you let your Irish friend know that you had the fear. So you spend the next hour trying to create the most cool, unassuming, calm text message you possibly can because you were terrified out of your mind that the night before you made an absolute tit of yourself. <laughs> so, eventually it comes to you, good night last night. <laughs> Question mark? <laughs> now I can guarantee each and every one of you that there will never be, or at least there will never feel like, a longer response time in your life than waiting for that message. Now what makes this so beautifully and wonderfully Irish is there might be a moment, there might be a few, during that day of anxiety and fear, where you think to yourself, never again. I am never drinking again. It's a waste of money and time, and it leaves me in this awful feeling. 
I could use the money and time to do things like yoga or go to the gym or seek counseling over that sex dream I had about my mom. <laughs> Still just me. That's fine, that's fine. But we all know after that moment comes that it's temporary. It only lasts a couple of moments. But in reality, you know that none of us, born and bred in Ireland, would be here today if it wasn't for drunken mistakes that we cannot remember. Now ask Julian if he could drape down the Irish flag, but we didn't have the budget. <laughs> I've been Tim Charles, thank you very much. The fabulous Tim Charles there, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks so much for joining us. Next up, he started performing in Dublin in 2006. Please welcome Kevin Lerney. I'm sure I know what a lot of you were thinking when I first came out here. He looks like a young Maria Kieran. That's, uh, that's my mother. I've been told I have my mother's eyes and my father's nose. He too has a crippling cocaine habit. <laughs> I'm not the sort of person who blames all their problems on their parents, but it is my father's fault. I'm terrible at pool. He never brought me swimming. He said if walking on water is good enough for our Lord Jesus Christ, it's good enough for you, boy. <laughs> my father, that man's so out of touch, he thinks if I gap is a close shop in Kildare. Um, <laughs> I was raised Roman Catholic, famously never got along with the static Catholics. But I've left that all behind me now, to the point where if I'm sending a text with the word God in it, I'll go back and change it to a lowercase g. <laughs> <laughs> it seems petty, but this is a man whose response to any uh, crime is, you burn uh, for all eternity in a fiery pit. Um, you do miss the holidays, though. My favorite was, of course, Ash Wednesday. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, Ash Wednesday was an attempt by the Catholic Church to bring millennials back on side by naming a public holiday after popular Pokemon catcher, Ash Ketchum. <laughs> which is why you'll see people walking around with a Game Boy pad on their forehead. <laughs> I went to see Don Connery in a play there recently. My God, he was great. Um, for anyone that doesn't know Don Connery, he was a children's artist on The Den. He's a lot like Bob Ross, if Bob Ross had an owl fetish. <laughs> um, but the play, uh, Don, he packed them in place was full to the rafters. I got a chance to talk to him afterwards. I said, Don, how do you do it? How do you draw such a crowd? He said, I always start with the faces. <laughs> um, but it's great to see a bit of production value in a play. Most of the time, Irish plays, it's uh, a man with a pint and a hat. And sometimes you have to imagine the hat. <laughs> there are two types of Irish play, mostly. Uh, the first one goes along the lines of Act one, I'm sick of the field. I can't wait to move to the big city where my wit will be appreciated. Act two, I'm in the big city. Things are looking up. Act three, things did not go to plan. I miss the field. <laughs> the field is God. Uh, at any point during an Irish play, someone will inexplicably burst into an old Irish shanty. Oh, is my favorite letter of the alphabet. The second type of play goes along the lines of this. Father, I'm pregnant. Jesus and Joseph, the Holy Mother and the consecrated saints above us. At least the father isn't Protestant. Act two. <laughs> act two. The father is Protestant. Um, there is no third act in that play. <laughs> Speaking of, is everyone looking forward to the abortion referendum coming up? Um, I was trying to educate myself like a gosh darn fool uh, about what scientifically is happening to a fetus around 12 weeks. But all I can find are these blog-style posts named things like Mommy and Me that have weekly entries along the lines of, Hi, Mommy. At this stage in my life, I already have my own favorite color and fully formed opinions about women's role in the workplace. <laughs> Beside a picture of a fetus with a grad cap and a law degree <laughs> and a little fetus puppy. And despite that fetus puppy comment, I still think I am a good person. Um, every time I see someone dressed in camo, I'll bump into them on purpose. Um, the last time I did that, it turned out to be a distant cousin of mine. He's uh, my first cousin. He's just emotionally unavailable. <laughs> Does anyone remember a while ago when uh, Trinity said they'd stop using uh, the term freshman and use the gender neutral term fresh? That was pretty interesting. <laughs> For a follow up this semester, all grapefruit being sold on campus is now referred to as a fruit. <laughs> For full even handedness on that joke, I know there is a historic precedent for marginalization of females in Trinity. There is still a statue of George Salmon in the square, former admissions officer who famously said, over my dead body will women get into this institution. Uh, luckily, he is now a dead body. <laughs> All the same, though, it's PC gone mad. Like in 2001, A Space Odyssey, which features a PC that goes mad. <laughs> Thank you very much.
Kevin there. Oh, no. Kevin there, ladies and gentlemen. That's it, unfortunately, for the first half of the show. I know time really does fly. After the break, Margaret McHugh will be here tearing the house down and Brian Keegan will try to build it back up again. Seriously, though. <laughs> no, seriously, though. They're reckless. Um, so get the drinks in and we'll see you in three. Very welcome back to Stand Up Tonight, the funniest comedy show on TV. I may be biased. We have a real blast so far, and it's set to get even better as Mags and Brian are lining up backstage, eagerly awaiting that all-important yes from Simon Cowell and Louis Walsh. Oh, wait, that is the wrong show. Before we hear from them, let's take a quick momentary pause for the Angelas.
Hello, my name's Mags. I'm a psychic medium. <laughs> hmm. I was a small medium. <laughs> I'm a medium medium, and now I'm more of a large medium. A medium. Um, have a little think about who you might like to hear from. It will make no difference whatsoever. <laughs> but do have a little think. Okay, so as is tradition, is there anybody there? Fine. So, so I'm looking for a man, alcohol dependent, <laughs> who's racist and good at domestic violence. <laughs> any, any takers? <laughs> Actually, that's not, um, that's not a reading, that's just me looking for a new husband. <laughs> I do like to make the same mistakes repeatedly and look for a different outcome, so that's, that's fine, that's okay. So, um, yeah, okay, so no, no takers there? That's fine. <laughs> So actually, um, I'm not a psychic, you know, truthfully, but I am a racist. <laughs> so, I don't actually like, I don't like the whites. Um, I, uh, there's a lot of them. Um, the ones that particularly annoy me are the ones, it's all me, 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 very self-centered, you know, toddlers. Um, <laughs> you see a lot of them, you know, um, around. And um, yeah, very self-centered. So how am I gonna go from self-centered toddlers to Donald Trump? Tricky, I know. <laughs> Take that leap with me. So, um, when I think of him, I think of the three O's. I think, oh my goodness, how did this happen? I think he's original. This is my favorite one, he's orange. <laughs> and orange is the new black, so that does make him the second black American president. <laughs> so, well done, America, I know. So, um, and it's good because he's so straightforward and honest and transparent, and that's important. So I am going to come clean with you now and tell you that I don't actually need this, but I do like a little bit of comfort. <laughs> I know. So... I know. So... The chair. I like a chair with a back, obviously. It's not actually my chair, it's my dad's. Um, I left him at Super Value. He's resourceful. <laughs> He's 90, he'll, start, he'll find his own way home, it'll be fine. <laughs> so, um, really good. I mean, I have made an effort. If you are disgusted, and some of you may be, I have carried it up. <laughs> I've carried it up a flight of stairs, um, <laughs> two buses, um, yeah. And I like to use it for shoplifting. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's perfect for shoplifting. I'm not saying everybody in a wheelchair does that, but I do. <laughs> so, that's what I do. So. Not all disabilities are as obvious. So have we got anyone in with depression? Keep it light, Mags, let's keep it light. So anyone, in, anyone in with depression? <laughs> Just me. Now, I can sleep for 18 hours solid. I mean, it's a skill. I've worked on it. It's taken me years to get to that level. So Christmas is a wonderful time if you have depression. Um, it is fabulous, obviously. People there know. So uh, this year I was expecting an engagement ring from Brendan. That's B-R-E-N-D-A-N. But... Um, for the purposes of confidentiality, to protect him, we'll call him Bren, okay? <laughs> so, I was expecting engagement ring. What I actually got was a home testing kit for chlamydia. <laughs> I know, that was a surprise. And we all got one, the whole family. He gift wrapped them, I know. So, but my auntie Kathleen, who's 87, she was really surprised by this. Now, his, um, his sister, Mary, she got me um, a bottle stopper. You know one that you put in a bottle of wine? Should you ever leave a half a bottle of wine? Does anybody do that? <laughs> no. And his mum got me body butter. You only really get body bu butter from people who don't like you. <laughs> I gave her body butter for the last five years. So, <laughs> Anyway, I took the stopper back to Brown Thomas. Now, you know how I feel about the whites. There's a lot of them there, but I took a risk. <laughs> and it turned out it wasn't from Brown Thomas um, at all. It wasn't from that shop. She'd re-gifted it. It was actually from a shop called Summers. Anne Summers. <laughs> Yes, yes, madam, you're right, exactly. It wasn't actually a bottle stopper, no. no. It was a butt... Yes, it was a butt plug, madam. That's exactly... And I can see we've got a few users in tonight, so great. So I teach happiness courses, um, and I was going on a flight to England to teach one of these bloody courses, as you do, and um, I checked with them, could I use um, a butt plug on a flight? <laughs> And they said, if it's Ryanair, it's probably better not to. Or if you do, don't tell them, because they will charge you for corkage. <laughs> I've been Mags, you've been lovely. Thank you very much.
Thanks so much, Margaret. You're in the way of the camera, but it was great stuff anyway. <laughs> Back into your wheelchair. Um, next up, Brian Keegan, a comedy regular around here, and he's ready to knock your socks off. Hi, um, I'm Brian. Um, I, sorry, I got a bit confused. I thought this was going to be a painting show. Uh, uh, but I brought my painting anyway. Uh, I'd like to show it to you if that's OK. Um, it's my first painting, and I'm, I'm quite nervous about it, actually. Uh, sorry, th th this is it here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Makes me feel a lot better. Um, it's my, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I, I was trying to think of a really clever name for it, but I, I couldn't think of one, so I just called it what it is, really. I called it the Dakar Rally. <laughs> you, you know the Dakar Rally, it's the car race in the Sahara Desert. And this is my artist's impression of it. Um, um, <laughs> I know you're all looking at it thinking, oh, it's a bit of an obvious name, Brian, but, you, you know. <laughs> well, fuck you, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I was so poor, I had to paint this in the back of some crappy old picture I found of some fruit. <laughs> I, I don't know, what's, oh, sorry, sorry, you know, that, that, that's it there, sorry. <laughs> that's, that's it there, th 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 thank you very much. Um, uh, yeah, the, the other thing I'd like to do now is I'd like to read a poem to you, if that's, that's okay. Um, yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, <laughs> it's, um, it's about a place that I went to on holiday a couple of years ago. It's an extraordinary place. Um, left a very profound effect on me, and um, this is my poem about it. It's called An Ode to Magaluf. Um, <laughs> I don't know, do you know Magaluf? It's the Spanish resort on, in, on Mallorca. Um, it's, you know, if they say London is the beating heart of Britain, or that the Amazon is the lungs of the earth, then on that logic, Magaluf is the arsehole of the universe. So <laughs> it's, it's ghastly. Um, yeah, so this is it. I lay on the beach, my eyes closed, the sun high in the sky, the warm Mediterranean heat, caressing my naked body. <laughs> um, surrounding sounds stir my soul, waves crashing on the floor, a warm breeze blowing through the palm trees, two drunken slags trying to smash each other's face in. <laughs> I sat up and for a while I just sat and stared at the little boys in the water. Um, that, that, that's boys as in B-U-O-Y-S, by the way, not... Um, I, I wasn't looking at... Um, um, night fell on Magaluf like a great big dark thing uh, actually, this poem is shite. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that, that, that's me anyway. I'm just wondering, do, do any of you have any questions or... Um, um, did, did you all like my picture of the Dakar rally? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Well, let's start at 100 euros then. <laughs> I'm Brian, and you've been a great audience. Thank you very much. Some great stuff there from all of our wonderful comedians tonight. And of course, our lovely studio audience. Yay! Uh, so guys, before we go, where can we find out a little bit more about each of you and maybe catch some of your upcoming gigs? On Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and in your bushes. No, uh, <laughs> no social media, Tim Charles. Tim's all over it. Kevin? <laughs> I lost my phone a few days ago, so <laughs> you can talk to me after the show. I'll be in <laughs> the clockwork door tomorrow. Um, and that won't play for the recording, but yeah. So this is live, um, Kevin? Yes. <laughs> Brian? Uh, you, you will find me in the Haypenny tomorrow night. Um, 
and you can find, look me up on Facebook as well. Although, don't purr at me. Or <laughs> like that. It's a problem. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's it. And Margaret? Um, I'm at the Hapney, the Crunch, and in Cork, the 1st of April. And I'm on Facebook, but you'll find me as down as Papua New Guinea. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm avoiding people. <laughs> so apparently Kevin... What did Kevin do? Kevin, I accidentally said 2005 when introducing you. But tell us, how long have you been performing for? Since 2016, that's what I thought you Oh, 2016. I mean, he's fresh. He's fresh on the market. brother, Kevin Learney. Do not pay any heed to Oh, him. sorry, he's sorry. He's my good name since 2005. <laughs> and Mags, tell us about... Uh, what awareness you want to raise with your work in stand-up comedy and also the medium of psychic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so clearly I'm not psychic, although people think I am and they try and book me for psychic shows. I believe you. Yeah, you believe me, yeah. <laughs> and I make up terrible stuff about people, but they still believe me. But the, the, the wheelchair stuff's about getting people to think differently about people and being more open and aware that disability comes in different forms. And it's about having an acceptance and an understanding, really. Stuff like that. Is that um, enough for you? Yeah, that's perfect. It's lovely. <laughs> and, uh, Brian, is it true that you actually wanted to be an artist and it kind of went, like, a bit like Hitler, like, went, went wrong for you <laughs> and you ended up a comedian? Oh, Jesus. Sorry, went wrong for me. As in, <laughs> as, in as a painter, like, you know. <laughs> oh, sorry, well, uh, well I just, I it wasn't so. my, my, my thing, you know. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> But, uh, Tim, you paint as well, do you? Or no, or, or you don't paint. No. Oh, oh sorry. Sure. Well, I thought you should start painting or something. <laughs> oh yeah. How how how? Here's a, I just came up with this brilliant question, Tim. How does IADT treat you? Like, are, are these people nice? I don't know. I think so. They're definitely very loud. Are they definitely loud? <laughs> They're beautiful, wonderful people. So, so um. Guys, when you're preparing, I'm going to ask Kevin because you didn't really get a real shot. Like, when you're preparing for this and comedy, like, what is your go-to? Oh, let's what? not do that because we're wrapping it up. <laughs> <laughs> I love live TV. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's all we have time for here on Stand Up Tonight. I want to say a special thanks to our fabulous guests, the studio audience, and, of course, our house band and you for watching. I've been Alan Young, and this is Stand Up Tonight. Yay!